Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. If you've picked up a bulletin today, um, you'll notice that things are, are a little bit different. Um, I had anticipated uh, that today would be a day where we'd say, we are back a little bit more than we were. And um, the coronavirus is deciding to be back more than we are. So um, this is an ambitious order of service, <laughs> considering. So um, as, um, as you feel comfortable with participating in, in these elements, um, you, you are welcome. Uh, and so uh, one of the things that I had planned for today was full contact passing the peace. Y'all remember that? <laughs> if you are able and the other is willing, go for it. Um, otherwise, you know, maybe you might want to <laughs> ask for some uh, ask for some relief of that. Um, so check in with each other, um, but maybe hold about three feet there. How's that? So as we begin today, um, we are called to worship, and our call to worship is from Psalm 8. Uh, please lend your voices as we read this together. Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have shed your glory in the Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. What are human beings that you are mindful of them? Mortals that you care for them? You've put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. As we worship the Lord our God today, may the peace of Christ be with you. Take a moment now to share the peace of Christ with those around you.
Let's pray together. <coughs> Creator God, we enter your presence with praise and thanksgiving. We honor you as God of the universe who set the stars in place. And yet in your loving heart, you hold a special place for us. You consider us, you think about us, you love us deeper than we can imagine. And so today we lift up our voices in praise to the majesty of your name. In this moment of worship, may the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today's scripture reading is going to be a tag team affair. And I'm going to start with reading Genesis 1, 1 through 5. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. God saw that the light was good, and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. John 1, 1 through 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And as we continue to worship, if everyone stand who is able, as we sing the song, Shine, Jesus, Shine. You will find the words printed in your bulletin. Everyone will stand. Mm -hmm.
I will now be reading from Genesis 1, 6 through 8. And God said, Let there be a vault between the waters to separate water from water. So God made the vault and separated the water under the vault from the water above it. And it was so. God called the vault sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. Let's pray together. Gracious and loving God, almighty creator and the lover of our souls, we come to you with, with deep needs. We, we bear the burdens of our loved ones and our neighbors, and we bring these needs and concerns to you. We're grateful for this ministry of prayer that your spirit reminds us to lift each other up, to speak to you on behalf of others. And so, God, we are confident that you are at work to meet the, the needs that we've expressed here. And we know also that you are at work in our lives to bless us in ways that we can be a help to others as well. And so, as we pray, and offer these concerns, we also give you our thanks because no matter the darkness we can name, we claim your grace and mercy to triumph over these things, that truly your light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. And so for all of these needs, we do pray and we do give you our thanks. We lift up our hearts to you with the work of your church. Bless us to continue to be a beacon on this hill, a light that shines in the darkness as well, because the light of Christ is with us. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Genesis 1, 9 through 14. And God said, Let the water under the sky be gathered into one place, and let dry ground appear. And it was so. God called the dry ground land, and gathered the waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it, according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kind, and fruits, and trees bearing fruit with seed in it according to their kinds. And God saw it was good. And there was the evening, and the, there was the morning, the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years. I'd like to introduce you to a, a symbol that will accompany us uh, through the month of August. Uh, today's August 1st. Can you believe it? There's nothing we can do about that, really. <laughs> As I began to plan preaching for this month, and I looked at you know, the calendar changing to the, the 1st of August, obviously going back to school came to mind. And I began to say, okay, if we're returning to school, um, what do we need to hear? But then it was also more about returning, as, as I've hinted earlier. Um, you know, what, is, what is more and more of, of being back look like and feel like? Um, sometimes our, our return seems more of an opportunity to start over, to begin again. And so then, ah, aha, let's talk about this creation story in Genesis in ways that can refresh us, in ways that can help us understand that we can begin again. Many people have, have deep struggles 
um, even to struggle with issues of personal health, mental health. Um, and so, as, as we talked about light shining in the darkness, as we've heard that from the Gospel of John, that still is a very true thing that light shines in our own darkness and God still speaks a creative word into our lives that we can begin again. So the, the symbol I'd like to introduce you to is the semicolon. Yeah, I painted that. <laughs> so come closer after the service and marvel. <laughs> <laughs> in case this preaching thing doesn't work out. <laughs> the, the semicolon uh, used in, in our, our English language um, indicates a place in a sentence where the writer of that sentence could have stopped right there with that first complete thought, but chose instead to continue. <laughs> uh, for people who have struggled with um, mental health issues, darkness in their own lives, even um, the considerations of suicide and attempts at suicide. The semicolon for them has become a great symbol as well. Um, that they have come through something difficult and they know that their story is not finished yet. At some time or another along the way, they made a determination that they would not end, they would not end their lives, that their story was not finished yet and they would continue. So as we look at the creation story, what you'll see as you, just, as you look at it in an English translation is that each movement of the creation story, uh, those verses begin with the word and, 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 and. If you read it in the Hebrew, you would find more ands there than we put in our English version because we like to clean it up, make it easy for us to read. But in the story of creation, there is the presence of this word, and, and a reminder to us that God still speaks, God still creates our own stories, our own uh, becoming is not yet finished. We can continue. And so this will be a part of um, a, a visual reminder to us uh, across this month as we look at the creation story about what God still speaks into our lives and our resolve to continue. Join that easel is perfect. <laughs> Thank you. 
Genesis 1, 15 through 19. And let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth, to govern the day and the night, and to separate light from darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fourth day. I don't know if that was driving y'all crazy or not, but I couldn't look at it being an inch off to the right without, <laughs> without having to straighten it up. We really enjoy speaking in absolutes. If I say that more absolutely, we love to speak in absolutes. Think about it <clears throat> in terms of the Olympics. Before the competitions began, we had some absolute sayings in mind. We're gonna, or you would apply that to a particular athlete. Well, Simone Biles is gonna show up and win every possible medal in gymnastics. But we've seen Simone Biles embrace a, a different and that um, we hadn't maybe considered. Um, that personally for her, victory and triumph are about taking care of herself. Or as her teammates expressed, we would rather have Simone than any gold medal. We said we're gonna about um, the United States women's soccer team. And then we had to kind of back off of that for a minute and say they are, there are also great athletes from other countries. We always say we're gonna about basketball. My goodness, we invented the game. And yet, there are some reminders that, hey, these absolute statements we make are, are bending and yielding toward, oh my goodness, possibilities. It's quite possible that somebody else plays basketball as well as our basketball players. But then the universe helps us out to understand that predestination is very important and a man from Hawaii wins the surfing competition. But in all of these absolute statements that we make, these things that, that tend to uh, fuel our fervor, we discover that chance, possibility, somebody else's preparation tends to force us to have to say we were wrong. Oh my goodness. I don't know if you'd sell a lot of t-shirts that say, wouldn't it be cool if... And yet... That's where we all reside. We don't occupy this frame of absolute certainty. There is a lot of uncertainty that comes to play in our world, in our lives, even in the sports competitions that we would say are a done deal. Nothing really is. As we look at the book of Genesis, these first two chapters, 
Um, there is a certain doctrine of the story of creation that is presented in a way that has would challenge us to embrace that the creation account in Genesis is absolute. That is that there are folks who would tell us that we should believe what they say absolutely about absolute creation. And if you are a fan of the Star Wars movies, Obi-Wan Kenobi said something absolute to Anakin one day when Anakin was teetering on venturing all the way over into the dark side. He says to Obi-Wan, and before they battle it out, if you are not with me, you are my enemy. To which Obi-Wan replies, and again, you got to think about this. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. Can you say that absolutely? So today, it's heresy, as, as some interpreters of the Bible would say. It's heresy for me to say to you, this story in Genesis Chapters 1 and 2 are replete with possibility. Let me explain a little bit further that this story that we read in Genesis is not about science. And this story that we read in Jesus in, in Genesis is not about history. Neither of those two concepts are the point of this story. This is a story about God. This is a theological story. And so people would like to challenge you or challenge me especially about what I believe about this account in the scriptures. For instance, the challenge uh, from the fundamentalist would be for me to have to check off the box. Do I believe that the world was created in six 24-hour periods of time called a day? The math and science of this. And what I have to say to that challenge is this. I believe God raised Jesus from the dead. Therefore, anything is possible. How God created is God's business. That God created includes us. And we're a part of this story about God. So what we learn here is not that bright and early on an October morning in 4004 BC, God chose to create, but that God chose to create. So Jesus was talking with his disciples one day about this rich man who walked away sadly because Jesus had told him. Okay, you know the scriptures, but there's one thing you lack. Sell all you've got and give it to the poor and then come follow me. And then Jesus comments on that. How hard it is for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. It's easier for a camel to slip through the eye of a needle. Peter comments, well, then who can be a part of it? Is this really possible? And Jesus replies to him, for God, all things are possible. This might be impossible for the human being. This might be impossible for, for men and women to accomplish. But for God, all things are possible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, there's something we need to learn about that phrase. And, and all of you who have read this in Hebrew know there's no definite article there. 
the 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 literal wooden translation would be in beginning, and and that actually is unusually out of order. Um, those two words come first, but if we were doing this uh, in proper Hebrew, it would say God created in beginning. But those two words, in beginning, are, are there to start with. And it marks for us a, a phrase that, that we need to consider, that this is the start of something big. Not just one point in time, but the whole process of getting going. Fixing to, as we would say in our common parlance. As, as, it, as, as, it, as that applies to temporal things. As that applies to space and time. So, at the start of things, and, and it's a fairly decent translation we have uh, for some Bibles say, when God began creating. Now that, that kind of rubs up against how we memorized it. Because um, we like that presented to us with the voice of the deepest voice we can imagine in the beginning, God created. But we also hear in this passage, in the beginning, things were a mess. My translation. Um, Formless and void is kind of how we've learned it. The Hebrew there is tovu vavohu, um, which if you will look later in your, in your Hebrew Bibles, you'll see that all of the things that God creates are then pronounced good. And there's some poetry happening here um, in, in this priestly account of the story of creation. Um, when, when God says things are good, in Hebrew that word is tov. And tov doesn't have really anything to do with tovu vavohu, except that it sounds a lot like it. So you can translate tovu vavohu, void and empty, or formless and void, as good and messy. But it's all working toward something good. And speaking of good and messy, we tend to speak absolutely about our own difficulties. We tend to speak rather absolutely about the good and messy parts of our lives, especially our own darkness. We make mistakes. Situations Happen and we fall into despair. And about our mistakes and about our despairs, many times we may speak absolutely about them saying, well, there's nothing I can do about it. There's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing we can do about it. Now, Sometimes I hear that, and I hear someone's resignation not to do anything about a problem because they are reluctant to embrace a process of change. Other times I think it really does feel like this is bad and there is nothing I can do. But in talking with people, in, in, in spending time together, in sharing in relationship, the question I want to ask, and I need to ask myself this often, is can we at least consider the possibilities? In this creation story, before there was substance, there was good and messy. There was tovu vavohu, and the Bible speaks to us about how the Spirit of God hovered over that. The Spirit of God hovered over that chaos. And it's at that moment of 
uncertainty, that moment of, of chaos, that moment of mess and darkness, that God speaks. And God says, let there be light. For you and me and our personal moments of darkness, this created word from God is still a true word for us to hear. Let there be light. And as the Beatles sang, let it be. So once God creates light, and darkness is dispelled, and the organization of creation begins to take place in the full light of what God has spoken into being, God looks at that, and God says, that's good. The tovu vavogu, the good messy, has worked its way to tov good. Jesus said, with God, all things are possible. And that's even true for our own personal darkness. And I know it's hard to believe, especially if you feel like you are in the dark and there is no way out of it. But God has spoken a very important and into what we see as absolute chaos. And God sheds light on a new beginning. I like to sit on my sun porch to study sometimes, and there's a moment in the day when the sun is shooting right at the chair I'm sitting in. So, you know, there's a moment where I just don't sit there. But as the light moves on, this huge ray of sunlight hits the windows, and I always look up at the windows and notice that the windows are really dirty. Something about light <laughs> that helps us see. But recently what I've noticed on the windows, just above the air conditioner, is a little girl's handprint. And I know why, I know how that handprint got there. Because in the evening, as the sunlight fades, the fireflies light up. And my granddaughter will stand on the table in front of that window and will look out and oh, she learned that word from me. So when I see this handprint on the window, I know why it's there. And isn't that a strong reminder to each of us? One light fades and more come up. And it's amazing to see. In our own difficult and dark times, we might not feel like we can see it. But if you trust it, if you trust that grace that God has poured out to us in Jesus, <clears throat> And it seems ironic to speak absolutely about this, but I promise you, I promise you, in your own times where it's too dark to see, there's going to be a little blink of light. And it's more than just a little bug that's flitting in front of you. If you open your heart to all of God's possibilities, if you will, let there be light. It will come. And it will be good. The light of the world has promised us this. 
Amen. equip you with all you need for doing his will. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be all glory. Amen. Amen.